We will start our conversation in a moment with the one, one who's regarded as a top criminologist in Trinidad and Tobago, Shirley, right up there. And she's very knowledgeable about the situation we are dealing with just before we do that. The Chief Justice, if you wake up this morning and look at your newspaper, well, he has opened a brand new can of worms. He's talking about looking at the laws that allow minors to be married on religious grounds. He said, how can you be serious about the issue of child abuse when you have minors marrying? Very serious situation here. Uh, we will get down to, I guess, that before the morning is over. Also in Barbados, they're having a tough situation with water because the ministry there responsible for their water situation says the drought has been so bad they may extend it for another month. We this morning wake up with some rain outside, so showers of blessings is appropriate to say. Let us go on with the first part of brunch this morning by welcoming criminologists. She is a top criminologist. She has consulted many governments. She is a consultant. She has spoken many times on issues, and you have seen her. She's also been a broadcast personality here. You're very familiar with her. I am speaking in terms of criminologist Renee Cummings. Miss Cummings, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I am fine, thank you. It is good to have you with us this morning. You, as a renowned criminologist, must be sitting down and looking at this situation and saying to yourself, because I have heard you many times state, this is X, Y, Z, and we have to try a brand new approach. The situation here is disturbing to everybody, but I want to start this morning in welcoming you on the area of how macabre, how how terrible these uh, these murders are taking place. Not just the murders, because they are terrible under any scenario. What we have, however, is the horrific uh, dismemberment and that sort of thing. It speaks to a neurosis, and as a criminologist, I want to ask you, if you can put some light as to why it has taken this macabre uh, direction, the murders we are looking at. Well, I don't know if it has taken a, a macabre direction because murders have always been very gruesome in Trinidad and Tobago. If you want to go back to the uh, uh, early part of the uh, 20th century, um, when we look at uh, situations where we had uh, murders perpetrated by men like uh, Boise King, and his boy. So there's always been this level of gruesome mm. and uh, really um, psychotic approaches to murder. But I think what we are seeing now, um, we've really not done any level of analysis to it or any um, research into the ways uh, murders are being perpetrated right now in Trinidad and Tobago. So it would be really irresponsible of me to even try to, you know, to assess it in, in any kind of scientific way because these are just new things that we're seeing. But at the end of the day, when you think about murder and when you think about how murder is perpetrated or how it is commissioned, it oftentimes speaks to the psychopathology of the offender. Mm -hmm. So I think our high detectives have a real task on, on their hands, and I think what they need to be doing at this time is really looking at the crime scene, analyzing these crime scenes, analyzing their autopsy reports, their victimology reports, and looking at pre- and post-crime behavior and really constructing a particular kind of profile that they can start to use more effectively in uh, reducing the homicide rate and really increasing uh, the detection rate. Criminologist Renee Cummings is my guest this morning inside brunch, and you're right. Maybe, uh, yes, may may maybe I've not been following as carefully as, 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 I, as I should have been in the sense that the neckties is something that I, I always associated elsewhere. And, and, and there are three, in, in researching this thing, I found that there are three ways, many ways to look at this. One is the, um, the, the fame seekers uh, who do these things for attention. There is also the warning from the drug cartel sending a message out to people that this is what will happen is, and a lot of folks in Trinidad seem to hearken to that latter explanation that that is one of the reasons for the for the widespread uh, dismemberment that we are seeing. This this necktie and this chopping the head off and one you know issues like that. There's one a woman whose body was drained of blood. This kind of level, people are saying not all of them, but a lot of this can be attributed to messages coming out of grang, um, drug gangs and so on. Do you subscribe to that? And if you disagree, please go ahead. Well, I don't. I actually disagree because when you look at the anatomy of the, the homicide that we're seeing in Trinidad and Tobago, many of them are a result of interpersonal violence. Many of them are a result of domestic violence. So the woman whose head was removed and her body, her body uh, was stuffed in the barrel, that was a, a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. The other young woman that they found up in the east, and, and it was alleged that her, her body was drained of blood. Um, again, that is domestic violence, interpersonal violence. So I can't see the Mexican cartel having a relationship 
um, you know, a, or some level of involvement in that. I see a mm. lot of time when we talk about crime, I think we, we use it to create a requisite level of moral panic because, you know, it is gruesome, it is something that touches us in real ways. But oftentimes we've got to think very scientific. And when we start to think a little more scientific, then we understand the things and the ways in which we are seeing things. I think in Trinidad and Tobago, we know that there's a high level of violence. We understand that we have no national policy when it comes to reducing violence in this country. We understand that there are no community-based programs when it comes to reducing violence. We also have high levels of school violence. So we really never researched or put any sort of empirical attachment to the organic roots of violence in this country. So much of what we say and much of what we deduce from it is oftentimes very inaccurate. So I think it is important, if we're trying to analyze a situation, to, to do it in a fact-based way, an evidence-based way, an empirical way, instead of really um, analyzing that through a lens of moral panic. But that is one of the reasons why we come to you with your expertise and your knowledge to set us straight on this in the area of, and you're right, there are many, many factors and, and a lot of these are domestic, but you do not um, find any credence, I, I ask you, in, the, in the, the, the burning, the shooting and the burning of people um, that we have seen. We have seen uh, two such instances in recent time. You do not ascribe that to any sort of um, message coming out of any gangs. Well, you see, it would be hard to ascribe it message because what we are seeing is not a trend, right? Mm. So we can't say it's a trend or it's, it's a pattern. We've seen two things, and there have been two things happening in a particular area, mm -hmm. which is the East Dry area, you know. Mm. So what, for me to really ascribe or to say that is gang activity would, again, really not be accurate. Mm -hmm. What has to happen is the homicide investigators have really got to look at that crime scene. And just two things happening does not make a pattern or a trend. That could be just one perpetrator. That could be the signature style of one individual, right? Most of the times when we see a body that's burned beyond recognition is because they do just usually want you to take a longer time to identify it, or they want to uh, get rid of a particular kind of evidence, or they want to sort of do the investigation, right? Mm -hmm. So that could more be the signature style of a perpetrator as opposed to a new trend or style of committing homicide by gang members. So we've got to always be very um, discerning in our thinking when it comes to crime and criminality, because if we are not and if we are given to the hearsay and the moral panic and uh, coming up sometimes with these approaches that are not based in fact, then what we do is we create more hysteria in the national population, and that is not wise. Rene Cummings, the voice you're hearing, in case you just joined us, in case you're late for brunch, we are talking about what um, what is going on here in the nation. And as she said, sometimes we can take numbers, misinterpret them, and, and, and hit panic. We're trying to bring clarity as to what we are seeing, and her expertise puts her into position to set us straight on that. How would you tell the nation, then, are you comfortable with the uh, what is articulated in the public arena vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, approaching this crime? I know very much that you are, you are in short supply of patience when folks quickly say, listen, this is what causes kids to gravitate to gangs and so on and so on because you see a broader picture, a broader way we should be looking at this. Would you articulate that position for us this morning? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Randy, I did not hear. What is the question? Uh, the, the, the question then is, are we looking at this crime situation in a vacuum when we take it here or we just say it's gang warfare and there is a bigger social component involved in this? I have heard you articulate positions on this that I think would be useful for us this morning. All right, definitely. So, you know, I've always said that Trinidad and Tobago is certainly a society that is really immersed in violence right now. And when you look at the kind of violence we're seeing, we have high rates of homicide, high rates of gun violence, high rates of sexual violence, domestic, interpersonal violence against children in the country, very high school violence, vehicular homicide. So really and truly, many of the ways in which we communicate in this country is very violent. We have not done anything really um, from a scientific perspective to understand the ecology of violence and how some circumstances and situations lead to potentially lethal situations while others don't. We've not addressed the sociology of deviance. And given our low detection rate, it is obvious that we don't understand the anatomy of homicide. I think what needs to happen, uh, there needs to be a definitely some level of national policy that deconstructs violence in very real ways and stills uh, the research and the empirical data to the agencies that 
to treat with violence, from the police to the courts to the criminal justice system to even the school system to even the family situation. Um, what we have never done is really come up with an understanding in how our society is developing in such violent ways. So uh, when we say things are gang-related, those are, that's easy. It's easy to say something is gang-related. It's easy to say someone is violent. But you've got to get to the source of that. You've got to understand the ecology. And only when you understand that can you design the kinds of preventive programs and projects uh, that you need to reduce what we're seeing in society. So again, it's really at the level of national policy where we continue to fail when it comes to understanding the kind of violence we have and coming up with the requisite intervention. You have consulted with organizations and governments because that's also um, part of what you do. Have you found, and I know you have done some consultation here, consultation here have you found open ears, willing ears to look at, at, at what you're showing and, 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 and approach this, for instance, beginning in the area of domestic violence and how that spirals down the line? Well, you know, we've never really have had had a research culture in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think no matter how much we pride ourselves on the fact that we're an educated society, we seem to have some sort of disdain. I think it is for science. So much of what we do when it comes to policy design in this country is based on serendipity and feelings. I think there has been, a, and I think people are interested, um, particularly at the level of the academy, the university, and particularly um, even the medical profession, even the police in, in some way. But it has to be a more concerted national effort because there needs to be some measure of cross fertilization and, and cross agency uh, collaboration that we continue not to see in this country. And I think it's also important for the criminal justice system to lead the way because much of the violence that we're seeing in Trinidad and Tobago as well is what we call violent retribution, where there is a, a particular level of mistrust in this country and legal cynicism coming out of communities where they view the police and the criminal justice system as illegitimate. And when people do not have faith in their criminal justice system, it becomes very easy them to take violence into their own hands as a form of violent retribution. 